I'm Eric Lipsy, and this is Galt University. Today, I'm here with my longtime friend, Tamara. How are you today? <laughs> Hi, good morning. I'm well. How are you? I'm outstanding. I'm so glad you were able to get on with us the week of Christmas, and I know you got a lot on your plate. So. <laughs> Man, trying to stay focused. Trying to stay focused, but yeah. hey, we just take one day at a time as we always do, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, today, I know you have a tax preparation business, but today I wanted to talk about the trucking business because I know a lot of people, I've heard a lot about the business, don't know a whole lot about it myself, but I know that there are some people starting to move more into that phase. So I was hoping today you could shed some light on what that industry looks like and whom it might be right for. So yeah. Yeah, so to yep. start, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you came to get involved with the trucking business. So what I was going to ask you is one of my first questions is, how much do you know about the industry? I don't know a whole <laughs> lot at all. You're educated and the audience today. <laughs> Great. You remember how we used to get done like that. And then when you say you don't know, that means I'm the expert. So then I proceed. <laughs> You are the expert here. You are the expert. <laughs> I'm not. But if you don't know a whole lot, then I would appear to be the expert. So, <laughs> so yeah. So with that being said, great, because you don't know a whole lot. But how did I get started? So how I got started was kind of um, got pushed into it. Uh, and so it's a difference from when I got started until today so I'll kind of try to break those two apart because yeah. I got started about probably 15 20 years ago oh wow. you know because that's when I was married so after my divorce mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out all of the things that I knew that I could capitalize on mm -hmm. that I could get into quickly to you know make an income for myself mm -hmm. so because my ex and I had a trucking company and I was kind of being the dispatcher and all of that. So uh -huh. it's kind of what I knew. Yeah. So whenever we got divorced, I had the skills of knowing how to run a trucking company. And so therefore all I needed was somebody who could drive because at the time I didn't have a commercial license. Right. Mm -hmm. But I had the knowledge of knowing how to operate and run a company. So that's kind of how I got into it because it's what I knew to survive. And so I just took those skills after we got divorced so that I can make it. And I found a partner who had his license, who trusted me enough because right. I didn't have any credentials, but I, <laughs> I'm like, I know how to do this. So he trusted me enough to partner with me as the driver. And so that's how we got started. Like I said, this was 10, 15 years ago. So it's changed a lot yeah. since then, but I kind of got pushed into it out of just a necessity, necessity, you know? So well, kudos that's the for taking the reins and running with it. That's outstanding. Taking the reins and running with what I knew, right? you know, which is how I probably wouldn't have got into it if it wasn't for that particular factor, you know, on my own, because like I said, we did it together. Uh -huh. But after that, I, I got into it on my own because that's what I knew what I was familiar with. All right. Yeah. Great. Now, if I'm someone wanting to get into the trucking business, where would I start? I know your situation was a little bit different where you had exposure already, but say I'm someone mm -hmm. with no exposure whatsoever, and I'm trying to get started just from the, the ground up. Okay. So in the trucking industry, there are actually maybe three different types of truckers. You can actually drive for a company mm -hmm. or you can become an owner operator within a company you can own and operate your own truck lease leased through that company uh with them being your backing person okay or you can just go at it alone and you can be your own owner operator and you can be your own what you have to have is what they call an authority to drive any truck over the interstate that weighs over a certain vehicle weight, you have to have what they call an MC authority. That's a number that's assigned to you by the federal government that lets them know how many trucks you have in your fleet, mm -hmm. how many accidents you've had on your, um, on your business. It's just a record of how you drive 
on the highway. Mm -hmm. So if you want that kind of a business, that means everything is on you. So you have to choose how you want to operate. Okay. So I've never been a company driver. That means you just drive for Swift or um, one of the other companies. And, mm -hmm. you know, you just depend on them for your paycheck. Right. And you, and you have no worries. But if you want to be an owner operator, then you have a truck that you have maintenance on mm. that you have to keep up with. Uh, but you also have a company backing you. But if you want to go at it alone, I've done the last two. I've been an owner operator with a company mm -hmm. backing me mm -hmm. as a parent company. And I've become an owner operator just solely on my own. Okay. So, of course, that's the more difficult because everything is on you. Right. Um, but as an owner operator with the parent company, I was leased to a bigger company. Mm. So being leased to a bigger company, I still own my truck mm -hmm. and I'm still responsible for my truck, but I'm leased to them. So mm -hmm. they still have the biggest responsibility of making sure that I'm good because I have their, most of the time you have their trailer mm -hmm. and their freight. Mm -hmm. So they are really responsible for making sure you get that freight back and forth. So you have to choose how much risk you're right. willing to take. Uh, and that determines how you go forward. Uh, I was wondering that on that, when <laughs> you're, you, you have to purchase your own vehicle if you're not working with a company, right? So you have that expense, like you said, plus the maintenance. So maybe when somebody's getting started, if you know nothing about the business, it might be to your benefit to go under someone else's umbrella to start yeah. with. And yeah. then once you get more experience and you kind of know the inner workings and the expenses involved, after you've observed a little bit more of how the business yeah. works, then maybe venture out into doing mm -hmm. your own. That's certainly what I suggest mm -hmm. because it takes funds. You hear me? with the Z on the end. <laughs> well, I've heard a little bit. I've heard and, a little bit about it, yes, yeah. <laughs> to operate out, uh, on the road with the big truck. When you're talking about tires, like a truck, when it does well, you're doing well. But when things go wrong, it costs for big money. A tire, one yeah. tire can set you back $500. Wow. So yeah. I would suggest if you don't have that kind of funding, I would definitely lease on to a bigger company even mm -hmm. though it's still on you mm -hmm. they advance you what you need and they take it out of your pay uh -huh. right yeah, so yeah. that's the safest way to be if you don't have extra funds that you can grab if something happens because mm -hmm. right now that's what i'm doing we're actually leased to a company so i have i haul we haul us mail Mm -hmm. So we are kind of the middle people in, in this contract. So they have the contract. We're the middleman. So we make sure the mail gets there and they get the uh, pay and they fund us. So I found that easier over the years because it's just hard. The hardest thing in trucking, being an owner operator is having a good driver. Uh, okay. It's having a good driver. Mm -hmm. Because if they if they don't operate your equipment right, it can mm -hmm. set you back and literally take you out of business. Oh, if you yeah. get a driver, you can have the best truck in the world. Mm -hmm. But if you get a driver who doesn't care about your equipment enough yeah. to check your fluids, mm -hmm. to check your tires, to check the brakes, to make sure that your truck is being maintained, mm -hmm. they can make or break you. Yeah. in the industry so at one time we were operating with three or four trucks but when the drivers when you can get two good drivers and two bad drivers those two bad drivers can literally take you under that's a big deal when yeah. it comes to driving and being an owner operator so you kind of want to find someone with experience and making sure that they have the track record that they're not going to leave you up high and dry with something. Cause I know even terrain is probably something that ha is a cause for concern because I know here in Colorado, when you're going through the mountains and yeah. if you don't know how to navigate that, you could end yeah. up in trouble really quick. I mean, they have a lot really of quick. burnouts up there, so. 
Do you see a lot of it? I, I can, I yeah. bet you it is that see in Colorado, if you have, if you live in a hilly area, yeah, then your brakes come into factor, you know, cause trucks operate with air brakes mm -hmm. and they, they can get hot mm -hmm. really quickly. And so in, in training, they teach you not to so much be on your brakes because they can overheat. Mm -hmm. And when you're, when your brakes overheat, I mean, you have a safety uh, break in there, but I personally would not like the terrain of a, of a hilly area unless I had someone who was very, very, very experienced. And mm -hmm. in 2021, a lot of your drivers are fresh out of school. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people going into it, coming into the business. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Fresh out of school. And so I'm like, uh-uh. That's why we kind of downsize. It's, it's a... It's a slippery slope. You can have a lot of good trucks, but if you get mm -hmm. bad drivers in them, mm -hmm. you can hang it up. You well, can hang I, it up. I imagine too. Now, if you're if someone is driving and you're charging a company to drive through Colorado, they're probably you could probably upcharge a lot more just because of how treacherous it could possibly be when coming through. I imagine that I don't know. Is it pretty much the same? Well, whenever you take a load. Say, for instance, I'm an owner operator and everything is on me. That means I got to find my loads, mm -hmm. the truck, I own it, and I have no one backing me but me. Yes. So there are ways for me to go find my loads. I can keep my truck running because mm -hmm. once I drop a load, I have to find a load. So when I find a load online, everything that's, that they're paying is already in the price. Uh, okay. So when I look on the load board, and I say, okay, I dropped a load in Atlanta. I'm gonna pick this load up in Atlanta and I see another load leaving here, going to California. Mm. It's a price already there. Ah, okay. Yeah, and so you just choose that. You have to do your own math. Yeah. And you have to see, okay, I know it's gonna take me this much fuel. Right. I gotta pay my driver X amount of dollars. Right. So you have to make sure that the math is maddening as they say <laughs> right <laughs> right so yeah yeah so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so you really having to just kind of dive into it to see you can't just take any job because you can end up upside down by the time you get if the person's not offering or the company isn't offering enough to carry that load you could end up upside down pretty easy if you're not paying attention you can. and if you don't know what you're doing uh freight what they call brokers they are the ones who have the loads it's called like freight brokering Mm -hmm. And so you get your loads through the freight broker and they know what they are going to make on their end. Mm -hmm. You got to know what you're going to make on your end. Otherwise, they'll get you and you'll be, you know, you'll be upside down. Yeah. So getting in trucking, it's accounting, it's human resources, <laughs> it's safety, it's compliance. Yes. It's, a, it's a whole business. So mm -hmm. if you don't know how to operate a business, Mm -hmm. You need to just be like a company driver yeah. at first. Uh huh. Now that yeah. makes a lot of sense because I mean, there is, and you can see why it, it's probably a safe industry to go into because trucking has to happen. I mean, if, the, if there's no trucking, yeah. there's no nothing, no groceries, everything shuts down. If there, yep. if there, are, no, yep. if there are no grocery, I mean, if there are no, uh, the trucking business isn't there. So I yep. totally see how it can be consistent work, but even with it being consistent, you have to be able to manage your the ins and outs of it. Otherwise, you can still be out of business even with having plenty of work to yeah. do. Yeah, that's why you choose your you choose your level of expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're not ready to do all of the things that I just said, mm -hmm. then just drive for a company and you know get your ducks in a row. And then because it's certainly more lucrative to be your own mm -hmm. person if you know yeah. how to manage it. Right. Um, but it's also lucrative, especially in 2021, to be an owner operator. I mean, to be a company driver, because like you just said, this this industry isn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And since the pandemic started, it's become even more yeah. necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're paying drivers. I know some drivers who are making five thousand dollars a week. Wow. Yeah. Just to deliver loads out here. So yeah. it's definitely good money whether you decide to be an owner operator or a company driver yeah. so you just choose your uh choose how you want to your level of comfort mm -hmm. uh i don't particularly care you know how we are to 
clock in and clock out, you know? That's just not no, my level. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's like, I can't do it. I think uh, Cedric put it perfectly. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm psychologically unemployable. <laughs> I just can't, can't do it. Just can't do that it. That is my guy. And I, <laughs> I take his words all the time. I replay them in my head. You know, yeah. that's my person. So <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I can't, I am psychologically unemployable, but I do know how to play the game. Right. You know, absolutely. You I do, do know how to play the game. Yeah. Right. And sometimes yeah. you just have to do what you have to do. Right? <laughs> exactly. So nothing is ever off the table with me because I know how to play the game. If it's something in it for me, mm -hmm. I do know how to um, to relax and, yeah. you know, do what I need to do in order to get where I'm trying to go. <laughs> but yeah, he right. is correct. He is <laughs> unemployable. <laughs> Now, shifting so, gears just a little bit, uh, let's talk about the, the licensing process. Uh, what is required to, because I know it's, it can't be as simple as going to the DMV and uh, <laughs> getting your <laughs> driver's license, you know. <laughs> Look, I've seen some drivers out here on the road. I feel like it was just, they just went to the DMV. It was that easy. <laughs> and I have my license. <laughs> I've seen some horrible drivers out here oh, no. because they're making it really easy, in mm. my opinion, to get your uh, commercial driver's license mm. when it really shouldn't be because it's a dangerous job. Yes, if you don't um, if you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. and if you're unexperienced. But um, so it depends on if you want to be a company driver. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is a lot of times, like Schneider and Swift. And these companies, these big, huge trucking companies, mm -hmm. they will um, employ you. They will let you take a class mm -hmm. and they will make sure you're trained. Mm -hmm. They will make sure you get your license. They will supply you with the truck to, to operate, to get your license in. At the same time, they will require you to sign on with them for mm -hmm. two years, yeah, that's three fair. years. I don't know yeah. what the minimum yeah. is. Yeah. But they will train you and help you get your license, but you have to sign on with them for X amount of years or months or whatever it is, which a lot of drivers do that. Right. So that's just being a company driver. But yeah. if you want to be your own person with your own everything, which means mm -hmm. getting your authority, it's, it's what they call the Department of Transportation number. Mm -hmm. um, this is another thing that the uh, state identifies you by. You get a couple of numbers. One of them identifies you federally as a motor carrier. The other mm -hmm. one identifies you through the state as a motor carrier. So you get those two numbers. And I think the state does that because they charge you a fee of course. for interstate. <laughs> Let me tell yeah. you, for being able to drive on the interstate, every state that you drive through, every state has like a fee that you have to mm -hmm. pay annually. So if I say mm -hmm. I'm going through Texas, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Louisiana, Mississippi. Uh, I got to pay like the tax fee annually to drive through the six states that I chose. So oh, wow. that's what the DOT number, that's what they call the Department of Transportation number. So you wow. have to know how to get that. You mm -hmm. have to have a million dollars of insurance mm -hmm. uh, that I think it, it could run you $500, $600 a month depending mm -hmm. on how many trucks you have. That's just one truck. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but now that's just being an owner operator and everything is on you. Mm -hmm. Then uh, at that time, you lease on to a company if you want to, which is what I would do. Because yeah. at that point, you don't have to have that, those numbers I just said, you don't have to have those mm -hmm. because I got a truck but I'm a, I'm a lease on to this big company. Mm -hmm. They already have those numbers. Right. So I don't have to pay those fees. Right. So that's the easiest way to me. And that's the most uh, economical way mm -hmm. to me if you're just getting started, unless you got a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can easily uh, get your commercial driver's license. They have automatic trucks out here now. Oh. Right. I started, we had to learn how to drive with a 13 speed uh, yeah. uh, but they have automatic trucks out here now mm. so you can become a commercial driver's license person just by driving a, like a big truck it's like a, almost like a big ford uh truck yeah. now 
Oh. So it's it's definitely not hard to do. So basically, uh, like you're driving a U-Haul or something. It's like almost that. like driving a U-Haul or a recreational vehicle or mm. RV. It's okay. just a big truck. Yes. The most the biggest thing that people have to remember is you have an, an axle that you know when you turn the truck and trailer, you know you got that little axle there. So it's not a straight truck. You mm -hmm. feel me? When you're right. driving a straight truck, yeah. you don't have to worry about the trailer right. following you. Right. So you got a trailer following you. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people mess up because that trailer can hit something. Even though your truck has cleared it, you still got a trailer that's got to yes. swing. It's mm -hmm. got to swing out. Yeah. So I've seen some truckers get in trouble with that uh, a few times. I don't know what was going on. I don't understand the uh, the technical part of it, but I knew that they were doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, that trailer has a life of its own. And so <laughs> you've got to know when you got a truck, that truck is easy to drive. Take the trailer <laughs> off, you can go anywhere. But when yeah. you got that trailer and you're making a turn, it, that turn becomes way more difficult because you've got to account for the space of that trailer that's how people hit signs and poles and stuff yeah because it's not like driving it's definitely not it's like driving a u-haul in the fact that it's high right but it's not a straight truck yeah and so it's definitely a skill that i, I feel like they should put more training into before right. they release uh drivers out yeah but it's all about it's all about the the dollars yeah and the industry. That. I yeah. get that. Now, is there a certain amount of hours that are required uh, for you to drive prior to getting your license or being certified or nothing like that? No, no. no. if you go. <laughs> <No. All right. laughs> and that's a scary thing because it's not, yeah. it's like if I get on a flight with a pilot and he's like, oh, I just got my license last week. <laughs> and you taking a flight with a pilot who only has, you know, a few right. hours. Right. But in trucking, you can go get your license at Schneider or Swift. And what they do do, they do put you in the truck with a driver, I think, mm. at the beginning. I think okay. they put you with a driver who mm. has experience mm -hmm. for a while. And you watch that driver. They don't just let you go as soon as you get your license. Right. They put you with somebody. Yeah, okay. And you get to ride with them. Mm -hmm. and get a little bit of experience but it's not long at all in my opinion right. six months in a truck with somebody and then they free you with your own truck right to me that's not a whole lot of experience when yeah. i got my license i didn't drive by myself as a matter of fact i still don't drive by myself because i'm not really a truck driver mm -hmm. but i will fill in but mm -hmm. i don't want to drive by myself it's just that truck is a lot there yeah. are a lot of components on those 18 wheelers that you see <laughs> rolling oh, by yeah. you. Yeah, a lot of imagine. components. And then, yeah, then a you're carrying someone's goods, someone's products that is uh, crucial to them being able to run their business. And you have that product yeah. on there and if something doesn't go, go right. I mean, you're basically, I mean, you, I know you have the insurance, but still yeah. that's something you won't take lightly because you yeah. do have that responsibility. Yeah, because that's a ding on your on your record. It's, mm -hmm. it's you don't probably have to come out of pocket because you mm -hmm. do have that insurance or whatever. But it's definitely a ding, a point, what they call it, on right. your on your license. And after so many points, you're not employable. Um, right? Yeah, I imagine nobody wants to say, "Hey, I, I have five hundred thousand dollars worth of product to ship to California." But you're not going to be taking it. <laughs> no, not, not not on a truck anyway. Maybe you can buy like a pickup truck and I can put a couple of boxes on right. the back of the door. Yeah, <laughs> like, I can trust you with that. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, it's just irres a lot of it is just irresponsibility. And to be honest, a lot of your older drivers are like retiring and mm. getting out of the industry. So that's what the dilemma was with us. It's like, do we want to get more trucks? And you don't really have experienced drivers out here now. So that's kind of the dilemma. It's a, it's, it's very, it's a dilemma you have to think about because either somebody's got to ride with this person for at least a year. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't release anyone uh, unless it's a year that mm -hmm. they've driven with an experienced person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah so it's uh it's a catch 22 so i'd rather downsize than just get me a nice truck put somebody in it who's about to tear it up right right, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's um it's a new generation of truck drivers out there if oh, you yeah. understand yeah but at least you're you, you have the experience to know how to vet those <laughs> to vet those people to make sure you're not picking up someone who is going to put you in just basically get you sued bankruptcy just uh, <laughs> and they will if right. you allow them but yeah. i like what um robert kiyosaki said mm -hmm. he said if you pay truck drivers are an asset mm -hmm. right a right. good truck a driver good. and he was like pay your assets well so mm -hmm. that's another thing you have to do yeah you have to pay the people who make you money right pay them well yes. and then you will have a better chance of them caring about mm -hmm. your equipment right you know? and you're able to keep them on board too they don't go just go to someone else who will pay yeah. yes so you might you if you have to pay them extra pay them extra because they are very valuable now don't let them know how valuable they are <laughs> right. they might... <laughs> yeah you don't want to try to take the house but you know i appreciate you but uh, you know you're not the company you know yeah <laughs> yeah just like I'm gonna just give you a little extra. Don't don't tell them why. <laughs> they might try to get you at that right. point. Uh -huh. I, that stuck with me when he said that. That is true. You pay your assets well because when they make money, you make money. Right. Right. Absolutely. So that's how I look at that. We're gonna try to recruit you after this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I don't know if I can play. If I put anything else on my plate, Teresa's probably gonna be like, you know what, I'm done with you. <laughs> I can see her. I can actually see her out there doing it. You know, Teresa's yeah. bad. I can see her in a truck. Yeah, her dad used to years ago, but uh, really? yeah, yeah, many years ago. Yeah, he, he used to do it. Yeah. Oh wow, it was yeah. much different then. It's yeah. a different ball game now, but it's a lot of money in it. Yeah, that's why that's why we're here. We're shifting gears just a little bit. I, I wanted to talk to you about uh, you mentioned a broker earlier. Mm -hmm. So there are people who go out to find these these jobs that need to happen and they match them with the truck drivers. Is that? Yes. OK, so there is uh, online when once you get your own authority mm -hmm. and this is the this is the truck driver who's who everything is on them. They don't have anybody backing them. Mm -hmm. So now I got to find my own loads. Ah. So there are websites out there. I think one I used to use years ago, it was called getloaded.com. Okay. And they have a whole list of loads out there. Mm. And um, those brokers, they're not all about the same broker. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm a freight broker, that means I find loads and I post them mm -hmm. so that drivers can see them. Mm -hmm. and choose them and then once you find a load that you like that's in your area going your way you call the broker and uh, they give you more details on the load they give you the price well you see the price out there but you get mm -hmm. to ask questions right because if i get somewhere say for instance i'm traveling somewhere and there's a wreck and i'm sitting in traffic waiting on the wreck to clear mm -hmm. so Somebody's got to pay me for my time of just sitting there. So, cause that's a, that's a thing that can happen in driving. I can have a load headed somewhere and the, the, there's an accident ahead of me, which stops me. So a lot of times we're just sitting on the road for two, three hours and you can't move. So that's time. Mm -hmm. So you get to negotiate issues like that. You know, mm -hmm. how do you handle that if I'm just sitting on the side of, if I can't move and I'm just wasting my time? Because mm -hmm. therefore I want to get paid for my hours too, right? right. you know? So it's, uh, you call them, they post the loads. Mm -hmm. Being a freight broker is another good job. That's another thing I consider yeah. kind of getting into. Because like you don't that. have to have a truck. Right. You don't have to have a truck. <laughs> right. You don't have right. to have a driver. Yeah. You just have to have a connect. Yeah, that's where all the retired guys are going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's on my list. That's on my list of things to do. <laughs> you don't have the headache. Right. The only thing you have to do is make sure your freight is getting there on time. And so you check in with your driver to see where they are. A lot of times there are GPSs in the truck now. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you can track your, you can track them and to see where they are. But as a broker, I'm just making sure you get my freight there. Right. And you get it there safe and sound. Mm -hmm. And my um, person that you're delivering to is happy. Right. That's all I got to do as a broker. So that's a good, that's another thing to get into upon retiring. It it is. So all of those loads are posted Mm -hmm. on the, on the internet. And there are a lot of sites that you can choose and you said just, it's not a there's not a bidding system. You just go in, the price is already set. But if there's some additional cost that may be incurred later that you figure out, you can call up the company to discuss that with them. So, yes, yes. Because yeah. you'll have they'll when once you get the load, mm-hmm. they'll send you a confirmation page with where you're going mm-hmm. and uh your freight has a number attached to it. Um it's called a bill of lading. Mm-hmm. So they'll send you your bill. They'll send you everything you need to know about getting that load there. And if you have any issues, you call your broker, you know, because they're going to make sure you get the load there. That's their job. Right. Once you get the load off, you can go fall off a bridge, you know. (laughs) Right. As far as they're concerned, right? (laughs) I get that. (laughs) Yeah. So that's how you get your loads. And it's it's a lot of loads out there. And it's, uh, especially now, it's trucking is really booming it, it really mm-hmm. is so it's a beautiful time to get into it if you you know that's great yeah if you want some good money it's a headache I, yeah but <laughs> I, I i just think back to when this interview started and you're like well i'm not an expert but then you're releasing gym <laughs> after gym on what people should be doing and how they should be doing it and how you go about doing this and that and all the things so now i'm like uh, i don't know about that claim <laughs> i'm not an expert i know what i know yeah. like that. <laughs> experts i don't think you can teach them anything else oh okay they're experts, <laughs> right so i know what i know and i can learn what i don't know yeah so that's, that's the difference between me and an, and an expert so I think you definitely put a bunch of information out here today that people will be able to take and, yeah. and, and use to get started or even consider if they want to get started, if they get started, which route mm-hmm. they should go to move into doing their own thing. Even Yeah, so, yeah I hope so. I hope so. It's a good industry. It's a really good industry. Now, is there anything else that you like to add that you think uh, people would find value in before? Well, I will leave you with this. I read this as I was doing my research and this tickled me. (laughs) Somebody was asking a driver, what are the pros and cons of being in the industry? Uh And he said, the pros, the pro to it is it's all on you. You work when you want, you drive when you want, you you go where you want, you decide how much is a fair rate. Uh And he said, they was like, well, what is the con? He's like, the con is all on you. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. <laughs> That's exactly so, right. Too. When I read that, I, I said that sums up the whole industry. The pro right. and the con is the same. Uh-huh. It's yeah. all on you and it's all on you. <laughs> so that's how yeah. I will leave you. <laughs> that, that sounds exactly right. It's like, oh, you don't want to work today? Well, don't work today. You don't get a paycheck tomorrow either. But you it's know, all on you. All on you. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. That sums it all up right there. (laughs) Yes. Well, Tamara, this has been a a real joy, a real pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on with us today. I I really appreciate it. And like I said, I think definitely someone's going to find value in this information. Not that I'm going into the business, but I found the information very valuable myself. So I hope so. I can see you as a broker. So hey, I think I think yeah, I a got broker you. thing I could probably do. I could probably I do the brokerage. See. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I really yeah. appreciate it. And this subject goes on and on and on because it's such, trucking is such a wide industry, but yeah. I enjoy telling the little bit that I do know. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Yes. Until next time. This is Gulf. Bye.